good afternoon, family. I'm excited to be with you all again today. Uh, I just want to tell you all thank you for all the likes and all the uh, the subscribes and, and everything. It has meant so much to us. We are getting the gospel out to the people. And uh, from all around the world, I'm getting people telling me, hey, I'm watching your videos. And it's because of people like you that help me in the algorithm with, with YouTube uh, to, to help boost me up in the rankings. Every single time you do that, you you like it, you make a comment, and you're you're helping me, you're boosting me, and, and people are able to find me. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you could today, please, if you're watching this video and you're new to my channel, please like and and, and, and subscribe. It, it, this is my little notification bell. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you all, thank you so much. There it is again. I just want to say thank you all again so much for helping me out. Um, okay, so this is where we are. I re if you all remember just a couple of videos back, one of the w warnings that the Lord showed me, he showed me three men. And I saw another man down in Brazil that were very uh, high in the occult. And I told you all these men. There was one that was over the pharma pharmaceutical uh, companies. And uh, we all know who he is. He's an American. And then we have these people in Europe. But I said, these three, these three men in particular, the Lord showed me in an open-eyed vision when I was interceding for America and for a revival and things like that. He showed me these men, and, and they, were, they were having a, a meeting with the devil. And they have two demons, I told you all, that were assigned to them, uh, uh, that were connected to them by the devil himself, right? And so I saw this one man in Europe having a meeting with the, with Satan. And the Lord warned me about this. And I saw them uh, trying to come against people's minds with satanic rituals, trying to come against people's minds to try to get them to do stupid things with those. You know, what happened in Maine last night. Very, very uh, demonic. And if you go and you read his uh, his alibi of all the things that he said was going on with him prior to this, hearing voices, demonic and energized, okay? There were so many things that were happening with this man prior to the incident that happened in Maine. So um, this is what I saw. And <laughs> they were, because I asked the Lord, I said, are they going to actually, because I asked the Lord about the man in, in Europe. I said, is he actually going to hire people to do this? And the Lord said to me, he said, no, this is a satanic agenda that's going to come against people's minds that already have a weakness of mental disturbance. They're mentally disturbed. And he told me, he said, this is, this is something that it was like they were, they were getting in the occult. It was an assignment from the principalities and they were going to come against the second amendment. And so the Lord said, this is how they're going to run their campaign in 2024. And he said, you need to tell the people to pray and hear the voice of the Lord concerning every place they go in uh, their day-to-day -day activity. Major events going with um, crowds, concerts. That's why I've, I prayed against uh, for, for Coachella. The Lord had me praying for this. We'll pray against it against for this year. Praying for protection. You know, I know they're heathen people. I know they're going out there probably smoking dope and that and crazy. But we don't need uh, violent acts of terrorism in any shape or form ever. It doesn't matter where they are or who they are. We are the salt of the earth. We pray for the people's protection at all costs. It, that's, that's what we do. We pray for, for people to, to find Jesus. We pray for them to, uh, to have a, a relationship with the Lord. We don't need them going home before we reach them. We need Jesus to touch their lives. We pray for all hidden things to be revealed concerning darkness. That's what we do. And, and, and if they have plots and plans, if they're lone wolf idiots like this guy was in Maine, we pray that the Holy Spirit would show us things to come. And that, that, that we would hear, the angels would go to protect the people. So I'm asking, you know, this is where I want you all to be at. You know what? If the Lord warns you about going to a place and he says, do not go there today. Listen to his voice. He's trying to protect you. Psalms 91 and Psalms 23 is what we stand by. 
and we have a covenant with a God that is a protector. A thousand shall fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come nigh us. We have a protector. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. I believe with all my heart he's our divine protection. But we have to be listening to him when he says, hey, don't go there, don't go here. You need to listen to me. Father, that's what you wake up every morning and say, Father, I thank you that you're leading and guiding me today and show me where I'm supposed to be. If I'm not supposed to go to the bowling alley, if I'm not supposed to go to Walmart today, if I'm not supposed to go to these places, show me. Because I need you, Lord. I need you. I'm desperate. I'm desperate for every breath that comes out of you, Father, today. Humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God. Hum, humble, humble yourself because he's going to protect you. He will, he will send his angels to keep charge over you and bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. I believe with all my heart God is a divine protector. But, but we have to be obedient and, and willing and listen to his voice on a day-to-day -day basis. Because this is the stuff that I told you was coming. I warned you about it. And this was going to be uh, become more and more and more. And, and so I don't know where. I just know the Lord said to be watchful and be listening to him because, of, because the days are short. The devil knows his time is short on this earth. He knows what's coming. The devil's trying to get as many people as he can to go to hell with him where, where he's supposed to go. Hell was never designed for you. So here we are. I told you all about the, about the warning about to pray for the people. So now we're going to go to this. The Lord warned me about uh, the oil. And I told you. So yesterday, uh, or two days ago, or the day before, had an oil uh, article in the Forbes magazine saying that they believe that we had an opportunity because of the war going on in, in the Middle East with Israel, that we have an opportunity that the oil will go to $200 a barrel. So here we are. Here's another thing that I prophesied telling you all things that were coming and the world's starting to get a hold of it. The Lord told me, I told you, we would have an acceleration in um, the war, an acceleration in the signs in the heavens, an acceleration in the economy. I gave you the word about crypto. Two days later, crypto started to move. And look at Bitcoin. It went up to like 35, 36,000 and it was dormant for all these months. It's signs. He's trying to show us what's coming. And so, you know what? It's not where, where we want it to be, but, but, but we have baby steps and it's coming alive. Things are happening. Yeah, we could see it crash a little bit. Yeah, it could go back up, but, but it's moving and it's starting, to, it's starting to breathe again. And it was dormant for, for so long. So here we are, we're seeing this. So a lot of people were upset about Pastor Steve's 10-year um, window. 10 years, 10 years. And everybody's like, oh, you know, I, I, I want Jesus to come now. And I, how come he's saying 10 years? You know what? We occupy until he comes. That's where I'm at with it. Pastor Steve, I brought him on. He's a, he's a brilliant man, y'all. And, and there was a lot of people that, that, that were excited about him. And there was a lot of people that didn't like the 10 years and think some of the things he said. They think, think it was false. But you know what? I allow everybody to come on and have an opinion on my channel and, uh, and, and, and bring the word of God in something new and fresh. I've never heard anybody preach what he preached uh, on uh, that day. And, it, and it, was, it challenged me. We don't need any sugar-coated word anymore. We need word that's going to challenge us to grow spiritually. And if we have 10 years and we go through more birthing pains, everything that the Lord showed me all, if you think about what, what, what I told you prophetically, what I've been praying over, from the, the 350 million people going home to the wealth transfer, supernatural wealth transfer through crypto, through gold, through silver, through, through these things, the Lord showed me. It's not going to happen just like somebody going out to their mailbox and open up the mailbox and getting a $10 million check. You all need to know. The Bible says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And he also says that he put, whatever you put your hands to will prosper. Now, I believe in miracles, and I believe God can help you and bring you things whenever you don't have it to even start. Uh, like with, with to even start with investments, you know. He, he'll bring you witty ideas and creative ideas to get wealth. But I'm trying to tell you all, there's, this is an acceleration of time of finances. Like I try to warn you. He warned me to tell you about it. And here we are. We're, we're, we're going to start to see this stuff. 
And people need to understand, well, I, you know, like I'm going back to what Pastor Steve was talking about, the 10 years. If we look at how God has operated over the last thousands of years, has anybody found out God's not in a hurry? God doesn't get in a hurry about anything. It feels like sometimes God's moving at a snail's pace sometimes in life because we, we are our, our day to day, our Monday through Friday and our our, our Saturday Sundays, we, we're just we're going we're mo going through the operation of life of, of the 365 days a year and we go through one year and another year and we're going, man, God, where are you at sometimes, you know? Don't you, does anybody else feel that way? You know? God God's not in a hurry, is what I'm trying to say. So ten years is nothing. When you look at the scale of things of the last thousands of years, whenever when they prophesied Jesus was coming the first time, it took how many prophets prophesying out of their mouth to bring that word for everything that come out of their mouth. They're speaking. They spoke. They spoke. And they kept speaking to the atmosphere. There's a Savior coming. There's a Savior coming. And they kept decreeing it. And they kept saying it from Isaiah. All the people took thousands of years of de declaration coming out of the mouth of the prophet for the manifestation. Now, again, he's saying Jesus is coming. We're proclaiming it. Jesus is coming again. He's coming. He's coming. The rapture's coming. And we're decreeing it out of our mouths. The prophetic voices are decreeing it. Just like they did the first time. Here we are the second time. He's speaking to me. Tell him I'm coming, Brandon. Tell him I'm coming, Brandon. He did it to Isaiah. He did it to Daniel. He did it to all the people of old. The prophetic voices. And then he started using John the Baptist right at the end. You need to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Look at all the people that he used in the Bible before the manifestation happened. Here we are over all these generations we had another for the last 2,000 years. We've been proclaiming Jesus is coming. There's a lot of people that are, that are saying it. it's in the birthing pains are getting more and more and more. Here we are. We're seeing it. And I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. So then I have Pastor Steve come on and they tell you it could be 10 years. And, and people like, oh, there's no way we have 10 years. I personally believe we have at least six years because we missed the Shemitah cycle. And if you go back and you read Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's book, that every Shemitah cycle is an opportunity for, during Rosh Hashanah, for the rapture of the church to take place. I, I go by that, that, that theory, that we have six years left until the next Shemitah cycle and when that Shemitah cycle takes place, that opens up because it's a seven-year window before another seven years. So I believe the tribulation starts with a seven-year window, and it goes for seven years, and then the, the thousand-year reign comes, okay? So we just had that Shemitah cycle back uh, last year, and here we are now. We have another uh, six, six years now because we're almost we just we just closed that that first year of that that cycle. So now we have six years more, six years until we see that next Shemitah cycle fulfilled. So that's what my personal opinion is. Now people throw eggs at me for saying, "Well, I don't believe we have six years." We'll see. We occupy until he comes. Let's don't get hung up on all that. What you should be doing. Is praying, fasting, seeking his face with all your heart. Like I try to tell you all, God, we have an escape mentality. We have escapism. Everybody's wanting to escape and flee. We got to get out of here. It's getting bad. Oh, God, we got to get out of here. No, the, the, the body of Christ, our armor was designed to march forward. It never was to retreat. There's no armor for the backside. The Lord spoke to me and told me, Brandon, I never designed your armor for retreat. I designed your armor to, to march and go forward and take the land and take dominion and authority over what I've given you. The sword of the spirit, all that you go through and you look at what he, the helmet of salvation, the righteous breastplate, the girdle of truth and the shield of faith. Look at all I have, but there's nothing for the backside. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So we, we have an escapism mentality saying, well, we got to get out of here. Times are getting rough, guys. We got to go right now. We, Jesus, rapture now. Rapture every day. Rapture. But Jesus is saying, go, take dominion and authority. Take my, my gospel throughout the world, and then the end shall come. Preach my word and teach my people the th things that are, that are coming. Tell them that, that, that I'm coming. Tell them there's a hell, for it, to, hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Tell them that, that. you you got to warn them. 
And yet we're, we're at the body of Christ. We're in retreat mode. We're trying to hide in our little holes and bury our head in the sand about all that's going on. Well, we're worried about politics. Who's taking over? Is Trump going to come? Is, is, is the Democrats going to win? Whatever. Who cares? We got to get the gospel out. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Freely we've been given. Freely we give it out. We've got to go in, into the, all the dark places and tell them that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for them and he rose again for them on the third day and they don't have to go to a devil's hell. It, like I told you all just a second ago, it, the hell was not designed for you. It was designed for the devil. And you need to wake up and realize that your loved ones around you are, 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 are lost and we've got to get them saved. We pray that laborers will come across their path. We pray that their eyes will be open. There's a man that asks me all the time for his wife that is lost. He's a, he's he's a, he's a, uh, every 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 day it seemed like. Please pray for my wife to get born again. I'm agreeing with you, sir. I'm believing with you with all my heart. My, whew, I cry with you because I know how important it is to you that she she knows Jesus. There's, there's moms out there telling me their kids are wayward and, and they don't know the Lord. And they ask me all the time, please pray for them. Whew. Start getting that intercessory prayer on me to start interceding for your family again. I, I don't want any of them to go to hell. I don't want one of them to. And if Jesus comes right now, they're going to go to hell because they don't know him. And we've got to get the gospel out to them. We've got to pray that the blinders be removed off of their eyes. Because, because these people are precious to the Lord. And I know that you all are tired. I get it. I live it every day. I have a child special needs. It's hard. But God is faithful. Sorry. Um, God is faithful. If you, when all there else to do is stand, stand there for. You got to keep your armor on. And you got to keep pressing, pressing. You got to keep your head held high. Because if you don't, the devil comes as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He ain't devouring from my family no more. He not going to devour us. We stand by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. God is faithful. And he'll bring your unsaved loved ones in. But it's not time to go home yet. We got a job to do. And we got to put our big boy pants on, our big girl pants on. And we got to go out there and we got to win the lost. And we got to get these people. They're, 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 they're heathen. They're going to hell. And we got to tell them about how much Jesus loves them. That's why I make these videos every day. Try to at least because I the spiritual text has been crazy. But I'm telling you, God is faithful. And I ain't even scared of no devil. I come and get you. He tried to come in my house. He tried to mess with me. No. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against me, I condemn it. And I tell it to go under in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You got to believe that. Now, you pray over your loved ones, and we're going to pray over them in just a minute. There's a lot of people that's believing for healing. There's a lot of people that needs financial deliverance. And I believe that today's your day for your miracle. I had a, an amazing experience again with the Lord last night. It was, it was, it was like he was speaking to me audibly. It's the first time I can honestly tell you it was the loudest he's ever spoken to me about personal things in my life. But I'm going to tell you we're in a time of acceleration like we've never seen before. And, 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 and get ready for the greatest blessings you've ever experienced. I believe the anointing that's on me comes through to the people who support me. And it's like, it's like a blanket. And I believe the anointing that's on my life is coming on your life today because you support my ministry. You're on here. You're helping me out. You're watching my videos. I, I believe it. And I pray a, a divine protection over your family today. I pray because I pray for every one of you. 
I hope you all know that. I, I do. I intercede. My wife and I, we intercede for you. We pray for every all the emails. We may not be able to answer every one of them. We may not be able to answer every of all comments. It's just too much. But I'm going to tell you this. We pray for you. And we love you. And we thank you so much for supporting us. So I'm going to interject this right now. I was asking the Lord in my prayer time this morning, and, and before, I made the video, and I, I had my son edit it and everything, and I asked the Lord, I said, did I do a good job on the video? And he said, Brandon, you missed a very important detail to your video today. He said, you need to tell my people. He said, You're, I'm not showing you um, about the shootings and about that stuff just to let it happen. Yes, you hear whenever I, you and you listen and, and 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 obey when I tell you to be someplace because it'll save your life. He said, but son, if you'll drive and take authority over the demonic spirits over your town, over your city, and you start binding those spirits because you have authority, you are seated with him in the heavenlies, far above all principalities. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm telling you all, he is the same miracle working God today as what he was back then. And, if, and, and he gave us that power. He dwells on the inside of you. And you go and you take your authority over the principalities that, that I told you, that those, those three men, the, the, the cultic people, bringing it down. It goes from the head and it comes all the way down and it goes out to all the tentacles all throughout everywhere to... to cast spells to to bring curses and to try to bring forth um, chaos and confusion and whatever their agenda is on that area. And the blood of Jesus Christ, we overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we are seated with him. And when you take your authority over those demonic spirits and tell them thus far and no further... You have no right, no authority to dwell or try to mess with us in any kind of calamity or any kind of terrorist activity. We bind those devils and the maneuvering of those devils inside of those people right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to stop it. You will not touch our area in Jesus' name. And I call that, 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 that peace over this. We send angels. We can do all that stuff. And so it's not only, it's not about, oh, woes me, doom, gloom, and all that. It's about, it's about being wise and being a watchman on the wall, which I am. And I'm trying to tell you about the enemy's tactics and what he's trying to do. And then you as the army, the army of the body of Christ, come in with that, that message from the Lord. And you start going, hey, we're not going to lie, not on my watch. You're not doing that on my watch. You're not doing that in my town. And you get flat out mad at the devil at what he's trying to do and trying to bring um, from schools to whatever, to sporting events, to whatever his agenda is, to try to kill, steal, and destroy. We have authority as the salt of the earth and as a remnant to go in and take authority over our towns. I'm just trying to tell you all, it's time to rise up with that armor, what I was talking about just a little bit ago, and rise up with that armor and take our authority over the principalities and the powers and the spiritual weakness in high places in our area, the, even the little imps, and say no. It's like that. This dude who was uh, that did all the stupid stuff up there in Maine. They, he, they said he's hearing voices and he's listening to voices to tell him what to do. That is a demonic spirit sent to try to cause all this, and 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 we need to start taking our authority over this stuff and say no, no, you're not doing that. And we start praying and 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 praying in the spirit. That's why I made these praying in the spirit videos. You see them in the. In, the, in my description, pray it with me and, and stir yourself up in tongues for 30 minutes. You start doing that every day. You praying over your children. You praying over your loved ones and doing that. And, and I'm telling you, nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing shall hurt you. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but nothing shall come nigh your dwelling. You are seed with him in the heavenlies and you are far above all that. So I just want to encourage you with this. This is it's not a it's not a Debbie Downer message. It's about all being sad and wow wow. No, it's about it's about knowing your authority. 
So I hope this helps. So now back to the message. You all need to remain rapture ready, ready for him to come at any time. It's not about going back and hearing, well, we may have 10 years or whatever. It's an urgency. When Jesus took me to tribulation and he showed me things to come, I saw the Pope, I saw these things. So could it be 10 years? I, don't, I personally do not believe that. I personally do not. Now, like I told you about the six and the Shemitah, if we're wrong about some dates or whatever, I'm just going to tell you, be ready at all times. No man knows the day or the hour, y'all. Nobody knows the day or the hour. That's what the Bible says. But So we need to be rapture ready. We need to have our lamps full, ready for him at all times, getting ready. But like I said, I'm believing for all your unsaved loved ones too. And I'm believing they're going to have a divine wake up. It's going to be a like a light switch. They're going to they're going to wake up one morning and that demonic spirits has been bothering them and wrapped around their mind, causing the spirit of confusion is, is going to be broken off of their lives. And they're going to go, man, my Ephesians 118 just happened for them. The eyes of their understanding was enlightened and they realize they realize that Jesus Christ died for them. I'm, I'm believing that for you all. I'm believing for all your unsaved loved ones. I'm believing it. It's time for, it's time for, it's time for it. It's time for healings. It's time for deliverances. It's time for the manifestations of the Lord on your life today. So I hope this video blessed you. I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to intercede for your healing, for your unsaved loved ones. And we're going to, we're going to, believe, we're calling them in. And, and I'm believe I want so much so that you, you email me, you tell me my, my, my little girl has been wayward for the last, how many years, my wife, whatever. And today they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and savior. That's what I'm believing for today. I'm not believing faith calls those things that be not as though they were. And we're calling them saved. We're calling them delivered. Okay. Find a scripture to stand on today concerning your unsaved loved ones. I'm going to put something down in the description about what you can do to pray over your unsaved loved ones. It comes from Pastor Steve's church, and he has an amazing uh, prayer to pray for your unsaved loved ones on a daily basis. And call their name in this prayer out. And, and, and I'm telling you, you stand on scripture believing for your unsaved loved ones or your, for your healing. If, if you, you, you say, what are you standing on for scripture? You say, nothing in particular. I'm not standing on nothing in particular. Well, then nothing in particular spiritually is going to happen for you because the word is what backs the prayer. You have to have prayer. You have to have word, this, the word of God, to back your prayer spiritually to get your manifestation. You can't just be, it's like I told you, it's like praying twinkle, twinkle, little star, just without it. It's a flipping prayers. Being a parrot. Get it out of your spirit and pray it. Pray that word. Get a manifestation of the word of God inside of you, and that's when you're going to see results. Your mountain has to hear your voice, but it's the word out of your mouth that caused the mountains to be dissolved. I have mountain dissolving faith inside of me. Father, we just come against the spirit of, of, of deception off of the people right now in the name of Jesus. We pray divine protection in the name of Jesus over every single family represented here today. Father, I thank you that we hear your voice and a stranger's voice will not follow. I plead the blood of Jesus over every single one of them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that no weapon formed against them is going to prosper. I thank you that they're always in the right place at the right time in every, every single area of their life. Father, that they would hear your voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. I pray over their ears, Father, right now that there's no demonic spirits that would be able to hinder or, or harm them in any way talking to them or, or, or confusing them. I thank you that every single morning when they put their feet on the carpet, they wake up and they acknowledge you and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, what do you have for me today? I pray over every single one of them that they would hear you. They would have a, a divine revelation of the, of the protection of angels, that they would understand who they are in Christ. And I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that no calamity would come nigh them. No calamity would come nigh them. I thank you, Father. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord, for every unsaved loved one. I call laborers across their path. I thank you, Lord, that the Lord of the harvest is bringing forth the harvesters to come in and harvest the souls. 
Father, I call in in the name of Jesus that their eyes would be open to the gospel, that they would hear your voice, Father, and that you would wake them even if they have to have a, a dream of hell or whatever, that there would be something to shake them out of their sleep. To shake them out of their out of this oppression. That they would know your voice, Father. They would know you as Lord and Savior. I call wives in. I call husbands in. I call children in. I call grandmas and grandpas in. If they're unsaved and they don't know you, God. We call the harvest in and out in the name of Jesus. Lord, soften their hearts. Soften their hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We call them in right now. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Angels, go right now and prepare the way that these sons and daughters are coming home to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that they, we, they would not taste hell. They would not. But God, I thank you, Lord, that you, they're born again. They're, they're resurrected in their spirit, and they're going to have new life with Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory for every single unsaved loved one that's represented here. That today is the day of their salvation. Today is the day for their, for their, for their heart to be soft towards you, Jesus. We bind the devil off of them right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, get your hands off of them. Get your hands off my unsaved loved ones. Get them, your hands off now in Jesus' name. You cease and desist in your maneuvering. We take authority over those demonic spirits of oppression. We command you to release them right now in Jesus' name. We command you to release their minds right now in Jesus' name. That, that band of, around their heads be broken off right now in Jesus' name. Satan, get your hands off of them. Right now, you have to. We call in laborers to come across their path right now. We call them, we call them in. Thank you, Lord, that people be obedient, to witness, to witness and to show the love of God to somebody. You might be that person that somebody else is praying for. You might be at Walmart or whatever, some kind of grocery store. And somebody might be praying for their unsaved loved one at their, and there you come across their unsaved loved one and you witness the gospel to them. Be obedient because you could be an answer to prayer for some other mother. You could be an answer to prayer. I just heard that. You be obedient when you're at the grocery store to witness to, the, to somebody. You may not even know. That mom might be praying for that unsaved one. I just saw it in a vision when I was praying right then. You be the light. You be the salt to somebody else's need. Help them. Help them. If the Lord's speaking to you, do it. Show the love of God to somebody today. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for healing over their bodies. We call deliverance and healing and wholeness and wellness over them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. We call deliverance from all things. I thank you, Father, that they are delivered from drugs, alcohol, perversion, we speak to, to the circumstances of the demonic spirits that they've allowed in. We command them to go now. And we fill ourselves up with the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that you said you should know the truth. And the truth will set you free. I call healing and wholeness and deliverance over cancers and diabetes and over glaucomas and over, over brain disease, Alzheimer's and dementia and over, over open, opening ears and eyes to be open and deaf to, for the, the, the mute to speak. I call their tongues to be released in the name of Jesus. I take authority over those spirits right now in the name of Jesus. And we command you to release their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I command deliverance over them right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the healing power of God to flow on the inside of them. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, all the way around them. It don't matter. All of it delivered, healed, and whole and well by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. I thank you, Lord, that you, you became a curse for us. According to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. And I thank you, Lord, that you redeemed us from the curse. We're not under the curse. We're not under the curse. Jesus has set us free. And we thank you, Lord, that you set us free. For whom that Son is set free is free indeed. You are our Lord and Savior today. 
And we worship you, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your healings. We thank you, Lord, for deliverances. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say amen. We're excited about what, what, what the Lord's doing. And if you got deliverance, if you got healing in your life today, if you... <clears throat> try not to cry again. Uh, if you got healing and, and uh, deliverance in your life today, I thank you. You 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 uh, uh, make, a, make comment. a comment below. You tell us what Jesus is doing in your life today, and we appreciate it. Like I said, if you could uh, click that notification bell, like our videos, we really appreciate it. God bless you all, and thank you for watching it. Uh, thank you for your support. We put a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Jesus loves you so much, and we will see you next time. Have a blessed day, y'all. Bye-bye.